How's it going everyone? Welcome back to our fighting game. So if you noticed from the last lecture, the only thing I did differently was in our menus folder, I added two new subfolders, our main and our over to represent our main menu and our over game over menu layout, whatever you want to call it. And in our main menu, I named all of our objects that we put onto our main menu. Now, the most important object I would say is our gamepad and our start button here, because this isn't really a start button, it just says press start. So usually when you just say press start, it means the A button, or it means the start button, or it can mean the enter button. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to add one behavior to our press start object we're going to add the flash behavior and we are going to actually we don't need to add any behaviors to our object gamepad that was the only behavior we had to add but let's open up our menu event in our event sheets menus menu event or if you don't have a menu event then just make a new one and put it into your project and what we're going to do is we're going to say system every x seconds so every blank seconds and that blank is what we're going to fill in we're just going to say every 1.1 seconds we're going to have that flash now here's the reason why it's 1.1 we're going to add the action to our menu main object start text to tell it to flash and the reason why it's 1.1 is because we want the duration of this to be 1.0 the only difference is we want these to last for half a second. So it's going to be on for half a second, off for half a second, and that is going to equal to one second. And then every 1.1 seconds, it's going to replay. So let's go to our menu layout and let's hit play to make sure that it plays that. And let's see here, there it goes, perfect. So that's working, but you can tell that our actual gamepad, one, the animation isn't working, and two, we didn't even set up our gamepad logic. So let's actually do that now. The first thing I think I'm gonna do here, just to make it a little bit easier, is I'm going to take this frame, and I'm going to cut it out, and then I'm going to delete it. And that way we're gonna make them their own animations. We can do it with frames, that's not an issue, but this way we just get a little bit more control over it. And this is going to be a recurring theme in all of these games that I make. So here's what we're going to do. We're gonna say ID underscore disconnected. And then we're going to right click and add a new animation for ID connected. And in ID connected, you guessed it, we're going to hit paste and crop right up here. The crop button's up here, and that'll crop it straight to that. So now we have an animation for both of these. Okay, cool. The ID prefix is what I meant that we are going to be using for all of the games that we make. That's really, really going to be the most important thing. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go into our menu event, and we're going to say, add the event to our plugin, gamepad. And what we want to check is if the button is down. Now, by default, the gamepad that is plugged into your computer, if you have one, is going to be gamepad 0. Gamepad 1 would be player 2. So for right now, we're only concerned with single player. So we're going to say if gamepad 0. And we can pick button A, but I think for right now, we're just going to pick the start button since it says press start. And we're going to go to start menu, not back view and hit OK. So now, if the Start Menu button is down, what is going to happen? Well, we're going to actually do a system wait. This is going to wait 0.2 seconds to give Construct2 some time to register what we want it to do. And in this case, we want it to go to our game layout, which is System, Go to Layout, Game Layout, just like that. And we want it to wait and then go there. OK, cool. Now, the next thing we're going to do is this is the important part, and this is where the actual animation comes in. We must check to make sure that the gamepad is supported for that computer or browser or desktop, whatever you are running on that computer. We have to make sure that it's supported. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to double click. We're going to go to our plugins, to our gamepad, and we're going to check, are the gamepads supported? Now, if they are, we're going to hit B to make a sub event. Now we're going to say double click plugins gamepad if they have a gamepad. So now we're checking to see if the gamepad is supported. If yes, does he actually have one? Pretty much what we need to make sure that we're always doing is a stupid check essentially because having these stupid checks just kind of really reassure you that your code is working and they're not stupid checks. They're, it's really harsh, but 
they are the double checks and the triple checks and the quadruple checks to make sure that this is triggering the exact thing that you want it to trigger. So if it has a gamepad, then what we need to do is we need to find the object gamepad, so in our menus, and we need to set the animation to be ID uh, connected. There we go. So by default, we need to make sure that that animation is set to, if we go over here, we need to make sure that that animation is set to, uh, we can, here we go. Initial animation is going to be set to ID disconnected. There we go. So let's hit play and let's see how that works. So we're pressing start and let me get my gamepad. Hold on one second. And with my gamepad, if I hit A, there we go. It connected. And the image also went all over the place. So let's take a look as to why it did that. Let's go to this and that should be good. But let's check our bounding box. And now let's check our image point. That is why. Because our origin image point is completely off. So let's put this to the middle. And actually, you know what? Let's put it to the top left. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say apply to all animations. By doing that, it's going to apply to the connected animation and the disconnected animation. So there we go. Let's go back to our menu layout and let's just kind of reposition it here. And now I know that we're saying go to game layout, but I actually have something planned on the game layout that I didn't show you yet. So we're going to go to the over layout just to make sure that this works. And in the next lecture, you'll see what we are making on that layout. So if I hit A, I am connected and then I can press start on the keyboard and then it will go. Now let's also do one more thing. Let's take this event and let's hit C on the keyboard to add another condition to it. And if we go to our plugins and we go to our keyboard, we want to say on key pressed. And the key that we want to press can't be detected by this. So we need to drag this down and hit return and then hit OK and then hit OK. Now, we want to make sure that this is not an and statement. And by default, that's what this is saying. It's saying you have to hold down the return key and the start menu. And we don't want that. We want this to be an or. So we're going to hit Y on the keyboard to make this an or. And now when I hit play and I hit enter on my keyboard, the same code works. Awesome. So now the last thing we need to do here is we just need to organize our code a little bit more. So I'm going to hit G and I'm going to call this start menu text. And I'm going to give it the description of flashing start menu text. And I'm going to put that in there. Then I'm going to hit G and I'm going to say gamepad slash keyboard enter menu. And that pretty much covers it. And it's just going to say it's going to wait 0.2 seconds and go to game, even though right now it's going to the over layout. Then our final one, after I drag this in here, is if I hit G on the keyboard, I'm going to say are gamepads connected? Uh, oops, that question mark is supposed to go there. Check to see if gamepads are supported and if they are connected. So just by giving these groups descriptions, we're able to just come back to this and double check what we intended for this to do. Okay, so that should be pretty good. Let me hit save and that is going to be it for this lecture. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.